I'm John, and here's what I'm doing today. We're gonna move this outlet. So for starters, little disclaimer, this video is not intended to be advice. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, the purpose of this video is just to document what I'm doing on the house. Before you do any electrical work, it is highly recommended that you contact a licensed professional. So we've got two things to address here. First off is this switch. It goes to this vegetable peeler slicer. Um, we're gonna terminate that entirely. This is gonna go away. I've mentioned in other videos, we're gonna hang a microwave here and vent it through that. So we don't need this. The original plan was actually to use this power to run up there to run the microwave. But I think one of these outlets, there's two outlets back there is on its own circuit. I think we can run that up here and that would work better. Uh, and then the other issue is this, this is for the kitchen lights. It's already opened because I was planning on replacing the switch when I replaced the lights and I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so that one, we need to move because the micro or the oven here, it's gonna slide over once we get rid of this switch, it'll fit. But when you hang a microwave here, it's gonna be really tight to try and fit it. And it's gonna kind of be annoying to have right above the oven, it's gonna cake down in grease. So there's three places we can move it. Number one, we can move it right here. We're actually gonna get rid of this door and just have an opening, so right there is fine. We could also move it here or here, um, but all of these options are gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna require running wiring. I don't wanna do that. So what we're actually gonna do is put it back here. These operate the basement lights and this hall light. We're just gonna go right through the wall and put it here. I don't think that's gonna be annoying because 99% of the time when we use this light switch to turn on these lights, we're coming in from the garage here or leaving through the garage because the garage is right there. The other times, like if it's, we're already in the house and we wanna turn on the lights in the morning or turn off the lights, it is a three-way switch, so we can always use this one to work just as well. So, and that would be a lot, that's what we would use. So that's the plan. And looking at this, we should be in the same stud cavity, so it should be nice and easy. So I went to the store and I bought a three gang box. So this is what I got. We can put three receptacles in it. In this case, it'll be three light switches. These little tabs will clamp onto the drywall and that's what will hold it in place. The, this is called an old work box. A new work box, which is likely what's in here, had nails going through it. And when there was no drywall, you could just pound the nail into a stud and that would hold it in place. So first we need to do some investigating on this wiring. I need to find out what circuit this is on. I have a hunch that it's on the outlets because when I had the power off to this switch, that still had power. So I have a hunch it's with the outlets in this room. We're gonna do some testing. I also wanna know what the situation is on those two switches and I need to know if this bridges anything. It actually, I can tell you right now, it doesn't bridge anything. So this is the end of a circuit because there's only one black wire coming in and one going out. If it bridged, you would see something like this where there's two wires connected with a wire cap behind it. And that's not the case. So that should be pretty easy. The first thing I'm gonna do when you're doing anything electrical, shut off at the breaker. Six is kitchen counter. That's gonna be right here. We're shutting the power off at the breaker. Let's see if that shuts off the fan. Back up here. And that is it. So kitchen counter shut off. I've got a voltage tester. I'm just gonna test it. Now we wanna see if either of those are on their own. So we've got this one still has power and that one does not. So since we do have food and stuff in the fridge, I'm gonna throw it on there so we're still running because we have power. So that is on the kitchen outlet circuit, that is not, which is interesting that this doesn't bridge to that. Um, just, just an interesting thought. If it did, I would just terminate this one because we don't need it, it's behind the fridge. Now just out of my own curiosity, I wanna make sure that's its own. There's a switch labeled microwave downstairs and this would have been the logical spot for a microwave before I put the fridge here. So I'm gonna see if that actually is on its own. So the screws were actually like held in with paint. I, I had to use needle and pliers to get them off. What I'm gonna do is cut the paint around this. Now ultimately we're gonna have to patch this hole anyway, but I'm trying to eliminate too much tear out from the paint peeling off as I take this thing off. It looks like it's just years of paint buildup. 
Had to fight a little bit, but after 60 years, that switch is first coming off, I think. I don't think that's ever been taken off. I had to cut these wires, but I did need to strip them to test them for something. You want to find out which, what switch this goes to, or what this is attached to. So we are going to connect this guy onto the wires. And this is a transmitter here. We've got set to tone. I don't think, I think it probably powered off just from sitting on that. So it's set to tone. And this transmitter is gonna beep when we get up to it. You hear that? So we're coming in here. It sounds like that's the wire that attaches to the fan. So let's switch these now. Now see, it doesn't make that noise. Sounds like it might be coming to here. We've got another one over here. Oh, it's much louder here. So I think it goes to here and works its way around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this and see what happens. So my theory is the reason we were hearing that tone over here is because it comes across to this, runs all the way around to that. So now we've disconnected this. Still got some sound. Let's come over here. It's actually still picking something up. Interesting. So that is definitely interesting that even though we're disconnected, it's still picking it up. Unless, I bet that's why this might be the wire that runs to it. So I separated, separated these a little bit, watch this. Not a lot, and then it's getting it down here. So that's gonna be the wire we want it out. So now, again, nothing, and it's reading it there. Let's come back over here. There's a little bit of pickup, but that could just be because we're close to that wire over here. I don't know. So we're gonna play around with this and see what happens. Now here's the test when I turn the power back on. So these wires are live. So I have to be very careful and those might be live. We are gonna test these outlets. Well, I can already see these are working. Um, this one is working. What about the one back here? Uh, squeeze through. This one is out. So somehow that bridges over here. Let's test this one. And this one I'm gonna test a little bit differently because I don't wanna to touch that and I can't push this in. So I'm gonna use my voltage tester. That has power, this does not. So, to summarize, oops, what's happening is by disconnecting this and this, it's cutting off power to the outlet back there. So this must bridge it somewhere. Maybe it bridges it in here or something. I'm honestly not sure because there's only one wire there. So one of these should be hot. One should be, I gotta be careful. I don't wanna touch them. One of these should be hot and then one should go up to the fan. So how would that affect this one? there's no junction boxes unless you know what i bet i think i know what it is this goes up to the ceiling and then comes it no because then it would still need to boy i don't know why that one turned off when we disconnected this because what you would expect to see if power came from this outlet over here to this to that is you would see a third black wire that would be connecting tying in with this but uh, i'm not too concerned about it because we don't really need that that outlet anyways, so I'm not gonna overthink it. So now we'll shut off the power and uh, we're gonna try and pull some wires out. So this is interesting, I shut the power back off and I wanted to check something. I wanted to see this, my theory is, would be have only one set of wires going on a black and a white because it should be the last one on the circuit. I was wrong, there's two sides set, so that means this goes to something else too. And I have no idea what. It doesn't go to this because this is still running. I can hear the fridge running. And I don't know, my voltage tester right here. Uh, but I can hear the fridge running that's plugged into. So this still has power. This is a separate circuit and we tested that earlier. So what could this be going to? That is a good question. 
because by disconnecting this, that has no power. I'm gonna try something, I have a theory. All right, once again, power's back on, so I wanna test something. I reconnected this, so if we put that in, we've got power on both. We can see the light on the charger there, power. Power. So now let's go back here, now that I reconnected that, and power, okay. This is still disconnected. And I did wanna just check something, make sure that doesn't affect this bathroom here. So maybe this goes to that, which comes over to here. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the wires on there and see what happens. See, you can see a lot of this is just diagnosis. So we're gonna shut off the power, disconnect the wires on that outlet and see if maybe this goes to that. And my uh, tracer here is, this thing, it does not work well. This is what was recommended on YouTube, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, but maybe that was just throwing me off. So maybe this goes from here to there and then works its way over here. That's the GFCI outlet. I believe it has to start on that. So it should start there. So that makes no sense. So it should come around here and work its way that, I don't know. I have no idea. All right, well, let's do the next test. All right, power's back on. So those are alive, but still disconnected. But over here, I disconnected one side. I think that's the side going to this. This is still connected. We've got power here. All right, so we've got power there. We've got power here. We've got power here. Let's come over here. We've still got power here. And this is now just perfect. All right. So <clears throat> this is the last on the circuit. So it comes in somewhere over there, runs through those. Then it hits this. And then that wire connects to the switch and the switch connects to here. And also it looks almost like it's just plugged into an outlet in there. So that's interesting. But uh, I think we've got, and that's easier that it connects to this. It's, it's gonna be much easier to pull that wire out when we terminate rather than coming from over there. So next step, let's pull the wire out. All right, so we're gonna pull some wires out. I shut off this circuit. I shut off, well, that doesn't have power anyway. So let's check over here. I shut off this circuit. And just to be safe, I shut this one off too because I'm gonna be cutting into here. I don't wanna accidentally short out and hit that wire. If I do, at least I wanna electrocute myself. So now I'm gonna pull these, I'm gonna pull one of these out, the one that goes to that. So if you look in there, you see there's clamps that hold these on. I loosened it on both. And over here, I cut these back as far as I can, just so it's a little easier to pull out. So now I'm gonna grab them with the pliers here. And just pull. Oh, that is in there. Good. Might be easier to do this after we've disconnected the switch or disconnected the box. So we need to figure out which side the stud is on. I showed this trick in another video, and this is good even if we're not taking this out. You would go behind the switch cover and drill in. You see that resistance? That means there's a stud here. Adversely on this side, no resistance at all, so there's no stud. That means the stud is on this side, which is what I thought. So I cut into that a little bit, and it looks like it's actually attached to some sort of bracket on the stud here. I cut a little too far, but well, the blade is actually bigger than it should be. So I'm gonna try to cut that bracket off, but, one thing you notice, we pushed in on this side, so it's not attached to anything there, because sometimes what they do is they actually, on these older houses, have something that goes across the two studs and it's attached to that. Looks like this is attached to this bracket here, so we just need to cut through that. A little damage to the plaster, but again, this is all going to be replastered, so it's not that big of a deal. 
we should be completely disconnected. So I'm gonna try and dig this out. And we've got the box out. Interesting thing, these white wires, looks like it's one wire looped around a screw was attached to the top of the box. I wonder if that's supposed to be a ground. I'm not sure. But in any event, one of these, I don't remember which one now, is gonna have to be pulled out of there. Uh, looking here, you can see the top of the box down there. That's what we're gonna tie into, but, oh, here's an issue. There's a stud there, a stud there. We're not gonna be able to fit the three gang box in here. That's okay. I planned for this. So I bought the three gang box, but I also bought a one gang box that we can do instead. I bought a two as well in case I cut that one out, the other two, and realize that we have an issue, but um, I can use both of these. I'm gonna need a two gang box in the bathroom. I'm gonna need a one gang box up there. So if I ended up using this, I can still use these. Um, so we're gonna need to put this in. This is a little different. This one clamps on, this one screws in. The only reason for the difference is because they only had the blue ones in the three gang, but it, it should be fine. So the next step then is going to be to cut a hole on the other side of this wall. I'm thinking right here to put the one gang box. Um, and it's simply because I was I wanted to do a three, but there's a stud there and a stud here. There just isn't any room to do that, unfortunately. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to put it right above this outlet. And since these wires do come from above, that'll be okay. If we were actually going to that one, they might not even be long enough. So we'll be okay there. And then you see I twisted these together. It's just so I remember what went where when I was when I took the switch off. I'm really curious what this is, but it almost looks like it might go into that. So we'll, we'll see. Um, it doesn't feel like it's connected into this wire. Yeah, this goes, no, it's not a hole, it's a knot. So I don't know, we'll have to play around and figure out what that is. So the next step, I'd like to pull these out if possible. Now I cut myself a little window. You can see right through. These wires are kind of in the way. They go to this, but it's not the end of the world. Um, we should be able to go around. I already test fit the box. We should be able to go around them. And then you can see right through here. And then I just use the oscillating saw for that. So the next step, I'm a little too far away from the stud that I'm not a huge fan of. So, I'm trying to think what the best route to take for that would be. We could, <coughs> we could put in a piece of blocking. By the way, I'm still coughing from all the, um, all the dust. I'm wear I've been wearing my mask through all this, so hopefully it doesn't make it worse. But, so we could put a piece of blocking in there, which would be difficult, but doable. I might do that. So this problem is solved. I put a piece of one by four in here. I just cut it about that height, slipped it into here and threw a couple of screws in that'll hold it in place. And then we can attach the box onto this. It's not pretty, but it works. That seems to be my motto lately. And it's almost perfect actually. All right, we got the box in. I screwed it in, in there. Let me get a light on so you can see. So we got the box in and screwed in top and bottom. And then the wires are in. And let me tell you something, it was a lot easier to do that with having access to the back. Because that kind of sucked. The wires are a little short, but I think I can make do. That white wire and the red wire, I need to attach together. So I'm gonna do that with a wire nut. All right, so I connected those two with the wire nut and I wired up the switch. We're getting ready to test. So we have this question, is this a ground wire or is this some sort of neutral that was for some reason attached to the box? These two go to the fan, they're completely disconnected, but we're making sure they're not touching just to be safe. Making sure that's not touching. I'm gonna turn on the power, make sure the switch works. It's a three-way switch, so it's a little more complicated. I'm gonna test to see if there's any power going through that. And then, uh, I mean, we should be good to go. So the lights are on, off, on, off, on. So that switch works. Now let's make sure we didn't screw up this part of the three-way switch. Off, on, perfect. And we'll turn it off here. Make sure it turns on from this side. 
Oh, we did something wrong. So that makes that the master switch. So this is somehow wired incorrectly. So I'm gonna need to play around with that. Um, aside from that, so there's no power going to this. I'm gonna turn the lights on. So no power going to this at all. I think this was supposed to be a ground. It looks like it's its own wire. I don't see it inside connected to either of these, but we'll figure that out later. Um, we're still good over here. And we are still good over here. All right. So now we just have to figure out what we did wrong with the switch. Once we fix that, then it's just as simple as patching this hole and we're done. Well, and we're pulling those wires out. Oh, three-way switches are complicated. It took a ton of trial and error. What, what makes it difficult is they're using the wrong colored wires, which doesn't really matter that much, but it makes these diagrams complicated. And then also this is the old one. The old switch is actually wired differently, but we finally got it. So we get the lights on here. I can turn them off, turn them on, off, on. And then we'll come over here. And then there's the lights, they're off. And now the moment of truth, I already tested this, so I know it's gonna work. Is to come back over here with that switch off and to turn them back on and they turn back on. So you can see I wired it very poorly. I have pulled out the wires and reattached them about six times. So I just put it in so there's a connection. I'm gonna shut the power off now that we know we're in the right place and actually wire this in correctly where it's going around clockwise, it's all the way in. Um, so the first thing I had to do is switch the black and white. I had the white on the bottom, the black on top, just like this one. But one thing I noticed is this switch is reversed. The two screws are on the left and then the one screw is on the right, unlike that one. So if you flipped it over, which is basically what's happening here, and, and I do have it correct because it says top here. So this one could have just been on upside down or could be a mirror image. But that means the white one should have been on the top. So that's the first thing I tried. That didn't do it. So then after messing around, I switched the black wires um, to opposite size and that did it. So we got it. I was really considering putting the old switch back on just so I knew it was done, but we got it. Now all I need to do, shut off the power, fix these wires so they're in correctly so they don't look like that. And then we should be able to button it all up. We're good. We'll put the cover on and then it's time to address these wires sticking out and this hole in the wall that I left. One other thing that I did was with the power cut off or with the power on, I was testing this wire. I figured out, well, actually it's over here now, that that's the switch wire. Uh, when the switch is turned off, there's no power going through it. I mean, that's what goes up to the light. So that helped too. So another thing, every time I shut the power off, I retest all of these wires before I touch anything. Just to be sure I hit the right breaker. And the wire's in better there and here. So now we can shove it all in, attach this, we'll get the plate on, and we'll be done with this side. And done. Looks like it was always there. And this is for the hall light above me, and that's for the basement. It looks nice. I would have preferred if this was a little more centered, but to hit that stud, in fact, look at, that's a little off. It's an old house, little things are off all over the place. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's probably pretty level though. I think I did a pretty good job with that um, because I don't know where my level is. So I couldn't level it, I just had to eyeball it. Another thing is there is a little bit of play if I loosen the screws inside where this whole thing could shift that way. Might be enough to even those out. I'm not too worried. And all of this is gonna have to come off again anyways because this is probably gonna need to be painted. It's an ugly yellow. And that new wall down there we're painting Probably not going to want to match it to this yellow, so we're probably going to have to paint all the way up. So I'm just going to leave it how it is for now. Another quick little fun thing, I might be tearing this all out to put in a pocket door. That way, this isn't in the way of my shelves. I've got three more that I need to put there. All right, so back over here. Now that that's done, we need to pull this wire out. First, I'm going to figure out, I mean, one little tip I have for you. Join the DIY and home improvement Facebook groups. There are hundreds of them. I'm in quite a few. I'm gonna post a picture of this with a description of where it was. It was on 
the outside of this box. It was in that little screw hole right there. And see if I can get some clarity on what it is. There's no power going through it. No power at all. Um, it's white, so it would be a neutral. That's what it's supposed to be. They may have used it as a ground. So if that is in fact a ground, I just want expert advice first. What I'm gonna do, and I'm pretty sure you can do this with a ground, keep it bare, since it only has power if there's a short circuit or something, keep it bare, wrap another bare wire, just a scrap wire that I have around, run it through that hole, and then attach it to the actual ground screw in here, which I'm pretty sure is okay, because I've seen people do similar things, like actual electricians do similar things where they'll wrap two wires together and then just have one of them coming out. And there's not even wire nuts or anything, it's just wrapped together and then only one of them is coming out to the ground screw. So, and I'll ask the experts on that as well. But I need to figure out what that is. The fact that it's on the outside of the box, that tells me two things. Number one, that tells me it's not meant to be accessed, so it probably is a ground. Because I know in the inside of the box here is often where you'll attach a ground currently. And this is interesting how these are like two separate boxes screwed together. Um, so may, that tells me it's probably a ground. And if that's the case, that's gonna make my job a little bit easier. But that also tells me this house actually might be grounded, which is gonna save me like 10 grand on rewiring the house or all of the hassle. So the next step is gonna be to pull these wires out and power is shut off to, well, they're completely disconnected, so power's off, but power is also off of the outlets that they were originally connected to, so I'm not afraid to touch them. Look at that old wiring though. I don't know if maybe we should replace the wiring in the house. I don't know. Um, so this is really being stubborn and not wanting to come out. So I'm gonna have to play around with that a little bit and then we're gonna patch this hole. It is plaster, so it's really thick. So that's gonna be fun to try and do. But um, we're in the home stretch.